All right, welcome to lesson two from our unit on functions. Please read all of this. I'm going to pause and assume that you are reading it now. All right, thank you for reading that. Now, also read the questions ahead of time before listening. You will see that if we complete the dimensions here on the rectangle, that gives us a perimeter of 14 for one rectangle. Uh, completing the dimensions, we get it, and add all the dimensions up, we get 16 for a total perimeter on two rectangles. Three rectangles would be 18. Four rectangles is 20, and so on. So what is the independent variable? Well, the independent variable would be the number of rectangles. The dependent variable would be the perimeter. I usually think of this in terms of what phrase will make sense when I say something depends on another. So in this case, the perimeter depends on the number of rectangles is what makes sense. So perimeter must be dependent. Independent variable is the number of rectangles. Makes more sense for the number of rectangles to be the inputs, which is our independent, and the output to be the perimeter based on that. So let's look at the pattern. Um, if we look at the perimeter, we have always have these two sixes here and every one, that's fixed, that never changes. There's always those two sixes there, so those give us 12 units out of the perimeter. For first one, we get 12 plus two, second one, we get 12 plus four, 12 plus six, 12 plus eight, there's our pattern, um, or there's our total perimeters giving us this or set of ordered pairs, and do we see a pattern? Yeah, we're starting with 12, and then we're adding two with each rectangle we add. So giving us a function, our perimeter is going to be 12 plus 2x, where x is the number of rectangles. So continue to the bottom of the page. I'm not going to recopy them, but there's the ordered pairs. Um, we're going to write an equation. So if x is the number of rectangles, then f of x, our function based on that, is 2 times x, 2 times the number of rectangles, plus that initial value of 12. When making a graph, we need to label both of our axes, come up with a scale that makes sense. Since I've got to get up to 20, I've got to go by at least twos here, and then plot our points. Now, that didn't use up very much of the graph. We could even do a little trick here and ignore the bottom area where we don't have any values. Um, so we can do that little trick. where it's called, This is called a line break down there. And that allows us to start at 14. But as we go up, we can't change our scale. I do 14, 15 to show you that each box is 1. And then I'm not going to label every single box. I usually go by 5s or 10s or something that makes sense. And there we go. Also, we can't draw a line to connect this because that wouldn't make sense. There's only We can only add whole number of boxes. So just the points that would continue that pattern would be our graph.